Hello. In this podcast, I will try to explain how to use SPSS to conduct a two-tailed t-test. I will have two data sets open, one to um, show you how to conduct an independent samples t-test and another one to show you how to conduct a, a paired samples or dependent samples t-test. The first data set is the Rikers Island data set. This data set actually is um, compiled from Professor Andrew Carmen of John Jay College and I'm fascinated with some of the variables that are here and therefore I will use that to conduct an independent samples t-test. There are 979 cases in this, in this data set and I have some very interesting variables here such as the name of the defendant, sex, county, age, uh, prior felony, yes or no, um, days held in, at Rikers Island, ethnicity. That is really great. And, and the, the variable that I'm most interested in is the days held in, um, in the correctional institution. And I have another variable called ethnicity, where I have uh, Hispanics, Blacks, Whites, and, um, and other um, races such as uh, Asian and, and a value for other. One idea that came up in my head is to find out if there is any significant difference okay, in the number of days held between the black defendants and non-black defendants. So this is something that I've, I've thought about it. Is there any racial profiling and maybe, just maybe, uh, black defendants are held at Rikers Island a little bit longer than non-black defendants? So we, we have to really um, see if that is the case. But the quandary with any sort of uh, statistical procedures is that does the observed pattern that we're going to see here reflect a pattern in the whole population at Rikers Island? That's why we're going to create and conduct a statistical test called the two samples t-test. Now, why is it two samples? Because black defendants and non-black defendants are two different samples, two different populations. Uh, we don't really have a variable for ethnicity uh, for with two categories, black and non-black, but I created a new variable out of the old variable ethnicity where I coded blacks as separate value and any other race or ethnicity as a different value. So now I have two groups, non-black and black. If I use this button right here, which is the value label, I can see that uh, non-blacks were coded as two and blacks as one. This is very important when we uh, conduct the um, t-test procedure here at SPSS. So let's, let's continue here and the first thing we need to do is have a, high, a set of hypotheses. The claim that I have, like I told you, is that black defendants are held at Rikers Island longer than non-black defendants, meaning that the mean number of days held for black defendants is larger than the mean of number of days held for non-black defendants. So that becomes our alternative hypothesis, and that is one-tailed hypothesis. One-tailed hypothesis. The null hypothesis, on the other hand, is that there is no statistical uh, difference or no statistically significant difference in the number of days held at the Rikers Island between black defendants and non-black defendants, okay, which entails an equal sign. The mean of numbers of days held for blacks is equal to the mean of uh, number of days held for non-black defendants, okay, or smaller, okay. Um, in this case, right, we go ahead and um, we use SPSS. You have to go to the Analyze menu, click on the Analyze menu, the menu pulls down, you go to Compare Means, and then in the sub-menu you go to Independent Samples T-Test. We said that this is uh, independent samples because non-blacks and blacks are two independent samples. When we have the independent samples t-test dialog box open, the variable of interest is number of days held. So that is our testing variable. 
we bring that into the test variable. And now we want to enter um, the grouping variable. The grouping variable is the independent variable. And in this case is ethnicity 2. Right? So I bring that into the grouping variable. And now I define the groups. In this case, SPSS actually knows what, what group 1 and what group 2 is because there are only two groups. But sometimes you may want to do a t-test for a variable, nominal variable, that has more than two groups. In that case, you will have to define which groups you want to do the t-test for. But in this case, we have to define the groups anyway. So we click on the define groups, and then group 1 is blacks, that is coded 1, and group 2 is not blacks, coded 2. So that's what we enter. We click continue. We have to go to options just to look at the confidence interval percentage, and that's 95%. Um, it was entailed that our alpha level is 0 0.05, which is the reference probability or significance level at which we will test our null hypothesis. So 95% is, is, uh, is good. So we click on continue, and we click on OK. Now we have our t-test output. Okay, So the program actually gives you much more information than we need right now uh, for the present purposes. So let's identify the key elements here. Okay, So the first group, uh, the first table that we have here is the group statistics, which is very important because it gives us the mean number of days held for blacks and non-blacks, which is 322 and 313. Right? And then the number of black and non-black population. We have the standard deviations for each of these respective groups and the standard error of the mean, which is standard deviation divided by n, a square root of n. Then we move on to the independent samples test table. This is the most important table. Okay? Um, there are two significance, two tailed here. Now, our alternative hypothesis is a one-tailed hypothesis Right, so we need to find the exact significance or p-value. But the first thing here that we need to do is decide which one of these p-values is the correct one. In order to find which one of these uh, two p-values is the correct one, we have to actually see if we can assume equal variances or not assume equal variances. Okay. So to assume or not assume equal variances, which is one of the assumptions of the, of the t-test, is to find out what is the significance here. If the significance of the test for equality of variances is greater than 0 0.05, right? U or smaller than 0 0.05, which in this case is, because this is 0 0.01, then you reject the hypothesis that we have equal variances. So we don't assume now equal variances. We say that equal variances are not assumed. Therefore, we will look at the second row, and our p-value is 0 0.570. This is a really, really large p-value, which is greater than 0 0.05. If p-value is greater than 0 0.05, we fail to reject the null hypothesis. Right? So the null hypothesis now stands. Therefore, we say, we decide, we conclude that there is not enough or sufficient evidence to decide or conclude that there is a difference between um, number of days held for blacks and non-black community in Rikers Island. Okay? Therefore, there is no um, evidence to suggest that blacks are held at Rikers Island longer than non-blacks. Okay, so this is um, the conclusion uh, to this hypothesis testing. So we, we solved that. Okay, let's move on now to the second part, which is um, the paired samples t-test or dependent samples t-test. For this, I have another data set. Uh, by the way, this is the formula that you see in the book you know, to find the t-score uh, for the defend, uh, de independent samples t-test. Right? So this, this is the t-star, which then will be ca uh, 
compare to the T critical and then find out if you should reject or fail to reject the null hypothesis. But you see, SPSS was a, a much easier and faster than this gigantic formula. Okay, let's move on to um, another data set where we can test the paired samples. In this data set, we have a UCR crime index, right? All of these eight crimes are the major crimes in the index of the UCR. Right? And I have two columns here for year 2008 and year 2009. What we need to do now, we really need to compare and find out if there is any significant difference between these two years in the index crimes. Has the crimes decreased? Have they decreased? They remain the same? We have to see. The first thing we need to do is test or create a set of hypotheses. Null hypothesis is that there is no significant difference between the crimes in year 2008 and year 2009. A two-tailed hypo uh, alternative hypothesis that there is a significant difference between uh, year 2008 and year 2009 in the crime index. Um, and that is the two-tailed hypothesis, right? So we have to test this hypothesis at a 0 0.05 alpha level. To do this, SPSS has a different procedure. We go to analyze, go to compare means, and then we have the paired samples t-test. Let's click on it. See, we have only two variables here, and that is very easy for SPSS, but if you have a lot of variables in this variable box, then you're gonna have to pick and choose which one you want, you want to compare. So you take year 2008, bring it into variable one, and then 2009, bring it into variable two, okay? Option, 95% confidence interval, which translates to a 0 0.05 significance level, and, Nothing else but click OK. Again, here we have um, a lot of information, namely three tables. The first table gives us the mean um, of number of crimes reported in 2008 and the mean of crimes reported in 2009. There is a difference here. We can see that. There are respective standard deviation and standard error with the degrees of freedom. Okay, and then the paired samples correlation, we have a correlation now that we can see because these two are numerical variables and see that the correlation is one, which is a high correlation with a significance of zero, um, p value of zero. Now the paired samples test, that is the most important thing. And the only thing we need to go here and see is the t value, degrees of freedom and significance. Now this t value, right, is found using this formula here that you probably can find in the book, and you will find in the book. So this is the T value, uh, the T formula, and this is the D bar, which is um, this part factor here of the numerator, and then the standard deviation, which is right here, and then can be solved or replaced in this particular area. Okay. See, SPSS, again, is much easier. So with a T value this high, Right? And degrees of freedom, 7, okay, which is number of cases minus 1. We get a p-value of 0 0.08. Okay, 0 0.08. In this case, this p-value is greater than 0 0.05, our alpha level. And therefore, what do we do? We reject, we fail to reject the null hypothesis that there is no significant difference between crimes reported in 2008 and crimes reported in 2009. Therefore, the null hypothesis stands. When the null hypothesis stands, right, we do not accept the alternative hypothesis. Therefore, we say that we really don't, do not have significant evidence to say that there is a significant change in the crimes um, reported in 2009 when compared with 2008. Okay, so that's the conclusion to um, this hypothesis testing. And this is what we actually covered in this podcast, independent samples t-test and dependent samples t-test using SPSS.